Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we give all the praise tonight, oh God. Can you stand, church? Oh God, we lift up your holy name tonight, oh God. We say you're amazing, you're awesome, God. Oh God, we just say there's no one like you, oh God. We say thank you for your blessings upon us, oh God. Thank you for your mercies, oh God. We thank you for your loving kindness, oh God. We thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, oh God. Oh God, we would be without you, oh God. We just want to bless you tonight, oh God. We just want to say tonight that you have the greatest name of all, oh God. And your name is Jesus, oh God. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Adonai. Your name is El Shaddai, oh God. Oh God, you're Jehovah Jireh. You're Jehovah Nisi, oh God. Yet Jehovah Shalom, O oh God. Yet Jehovah Rapha, O oh God. Yet Jehovah Sikinu, O oh God. O oh God, we bless you, O oh God. We call you our healer tonight, O oh God. We call you our defender, O oh God. O oh God, we call you our savior, O oh God. We call you our master, O oh God. We call you our redeemer, O oh God. We call you our closest friend, O oh God. Oh God, we can't praise you enough, oh God. You have the most beautiful name above all names, oh God. Your name is the highest, oh God. There's no other name above your name, oh God. Oh God, we bless you, oh God. We reverence you tonight, oh God. Oh, come saturate this place with your blood, oh God. Saturate this place with your glory, oh God. Oh God, your presence is heaven to us, oh God. Oh God, whenever you're with us, oh God, we feel safe, oh God. We feel at peace, oh God. We feel joy. Hallelujah, oh God. Worthy is the Lamb, oh God, that was slain for us. Oh God, for you are worthy. You are worthy of all glory and all honor and all praise, oh God.
the greatest name, oh God. You have the greatest name. Someone lift up the worship unto the great King. You are the greatest name above all names. There's no one like you, Lord. There's no one like you, Lord. There's no one like you. to be praised you are great you are great and greatly to be praised you are amazing you are the great king you are the great champion you are the lion and the lamb you are the lion of Judah you are the lion of Judah you are the rose of Shaman healed when we call in the name of Jesus. Lives are saved when we call in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is your name. Jesus is your name. The greatest name of all. Jesus is your name. We won't stop calling your name, oh Lord. We won't stop calling your name, oh Jesus. It's the sweetest name that we know. It's the sweetest name that we know. So we call on you tonight, oh Jesus. We call on you tonight, oh Jesus. We call on you tonight. We call you our Father. We call you up a father. We call you at a night. We call you at a night. We call you Yeshua. We call you Yeshua. We call you Yahweh. We call you Yahweh. We call you Yeshua, our Messiah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, O oh God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. Oh, we lift up the mighty name of Jesus. We lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we lift up your name tonight, oh God. We lift up your name tonight. We lift up your name tonight, oh, Jesus, 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 hallowed be your name, oh God, hallowed be your name, oh God. and is and is to come. We say, blessed be your name, O God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. For you reign forever, O God. And you rule, O God. Oh God, we love you tonight, oh God. 
we love you tonight, oh God.
the wind you raised has come to honor you. The man you raised has come to worship you. The one you raised has come to honor you. The one you raised has come to worship you. Would you sing a love song unto him tonight? Oh God, we thank you for keeping me. We thank you, we thank you, thank you, God. Oh, the one you made a way for has come to honor you, Lord. The one you opened doors for has come to worship you. The one you provided for has come to honor you. The one you've healed, Lord, has come to worship you. God has come to honor you. The one you protect, Lord, has come to worship you. The one you've made a way for has come to honor you. The one you've made a way for has come to worship you. The ones you love has come to honor you. The ones you love has come to worship you. The ones you kept has come to honor you. The ones you kept has come to worship you, Jesus. He doesn't just keep, he sustains as well. He's a sustainer. He's a sustainer. He sustains. In the middle of the storm, he sustains. Through the good and the bad, he sustains. He remains the same. The same keeping God. Many times we could have died, but he's kept us. And we are here. don't know where we're going to get the next food, but he provides. He's a provider. He has provided for you. The ones you kept, God, has come to honor you. The ones you saved has come to worship you. The one you died for, God, has come to honor you. The one you died for, God, has come to worship you. Oh, we have come to honor you. beautiful one we have come to honor you the most faithful God 
We have come to worship you. you can do, Lord. No one else can say what you can say, oh Lord. us, God. You said it in your word. All your promises are yes and amen. forgiven because you were forsaken and I'm accepted Jesus and I'm alive and well the spirit is within me because you and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, Thank you. 
that you might give or die for me. Oh, amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor. Sing amazing love, amazing. Excuse would a man die for another, but our King, our God, our Savior, He died for us. He took our place and He died for us. And that's why we can come here tonight and we can lift up His name. We're engrafted because of what He did upon Calvary. Hallelujah. He said that He don't longer call us servant, but He call us friends. Oh, what a faithful God He is. What an amazing love. What an amazing love. What an amazing love. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. I just want to bless God very often, you know. It's midweek and it's challenging, you know. But uh, it's always encouraging when you come to the house of the Lord. It kind of stimulates you and revives you, you know. So... Don't take this time for granted, church. Don't take it for granted at all. Sometimes you may look around and just a few. But encourage yourself to trust in God and to serve God. If you don't hear anything I say tonight, most important thing, serve God. Amen. Serve God. Serve God. Because you look around, it's so easy for people to turn their backs upon God so easy you know and you can't serve god for me i can't serve god for you you gotta serve god for yourself amen you gotta serve god it's so sweet to trust in jesus amen and to take him at his word trials testings a lot of things will come but don't forget god there's one right to say fear god and keep his commandment for that's the whole duty of man Amen. The fear of God. And I just want to bless God for his presence tonight. Just give him a wave offering. Give the amazing God an amazing wave offering. Hallelujah. Glory be to his name. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for coming out tonight. Tonight, our midweek praise and worship. And on the behalf of the leadership of the church, we just want to bless God for you. The faithful ones who is always in the house of the Lord, the one that love God. You're here because you love God. You're not here because of the worship team. You're not here because of a pastor. You're not here because of a friend. You're here because you love Jesus and you want to serve him. And being a part of fellowshipping is part of serving him. Amen. So to forsake not the assembly of yourself together, as such will some will do in times to come. So you're here because you love God. And I just want to encourage you to continue to love God. Um, as I walk, I'm pacing around and 
don't see any first time visitors. So we're just going to skip that and just put your hands together for the person next to you or the person in front of you, the person side of you. As I often hear pastors say, if you don't come, we can't have church. So bless God for your brother and your sister that we're here in the house of the Lord tonight. At this time, we're going to invite the ushers to come as, we, as they wait upon us, as we offer up unto the Lord the tithes and our free will offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Forgiven because you were forsaken, and I'm accepted. You were condemned, and I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose. mighty God. We thank you, God. Your word declares hallelujah. We have gathered into the house of the Lord to worship you and to praise you and to bring glory to you. Hallelujah. We thank you. We praise you, Father. We thank you for the offering, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, that, Lord Jesus, that your people had, oh God, to give back in return what you have blessed them with, oh God. We ask you, God, to bless it. We pray for the continuation of the service. We ask for your anointing and your grace upon the man's servant. We pray, God, that you will give us a receptive heart, O oh God, to receive what you have laid upon his heart. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, ushers. Hallelujah. Is it your joy to honor him? Is it your joy to honor him? Amen. Yes, it should be a joy to honor our God. Amen. It should be a joy to honor him. Because as we sang that song before, he's the one who died, that amazing God who died for us. And in return, we should be happy or excited to honor him. Not just when we come to church, but honor him at your workplace. Even though your boss may give you extra hours and pay you less honor God. Even though situation may be tough or things against you, honor God. Amen. You have to honor him in everything. Even when nobody's looking and you're tempted to look at that X-rated movie, honor God. Amen. Honor him. We have to. That's the real test. I think Pastor was sharing it on Sunday. It's not in here, you know. It's out there. It's out there. And also, not only out there, we have a great crowd of witnesses that is looking down upon us and to charge us on, to encourage us to run this race. Amen? I'm just provoking you because I love to be provoked too. You know? You know, to provoke one another in the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. So, no, bless God. I'm not changed, so got to get away. But just a few notices. Um, tomorrow, men, be reminded of our men's meeting tomorrow, second men's meeting for the year to spread the word. You know, if you don't see any 
Some of the men here, just let them be reminded that we're brothers keepers tomorrow at 7.30. And Sunday will be our Good Friday service. What time is the pass? Is it 10 or 9 o'clock? I don't remember. What. It's 9, I don't remember. Um, what time we normally have the service? Is nine or, I don't remember that seeing it on the screen. Is it 9 or 10? This is the jazz. Wait, all of us don't remember. <laughs> Not looking good at all. I think it's nine, we know, we have it, you know. Nine, this is Natasha, okay, yeah, so I think it's nine o'clock. Oh, wait, if you come nine and nobody has start to pray, and then we, in amen, so. Yes, Good Friday service at nine as we gather before the Lord, and it will be serving the Lord, observing the Lord's table at the same time. And also, we won't be having Zoom prayer meeting that night, you know, and um, Saturday, I don't think there's any soup kitchen, but I think there's children church. Um, I stand corrected. I think there's children's church. Yes, children's church on Saturday. And Sunday at 9.30, we're back here for prayer and 10 o'clock for our Sunday worship, regular service. Amen. And just one more announcement. Um, Ambassador Jarvis, Brother Hugh Jarvis and his family, you know, just want to thank God for the church for praying. His wife was attacked. She's still in the hospital, you know, but um, she, you know, had an attack where she needed some blood, and she got those blood, so they're just observing her right now to see if they could give her the green light to release her and send her home, but um, she's doing much better, as Brother Jarvis just instructed me, and we just want to, he just want to, on the behalf of his family, to thank the church for those of you who has been praying, and she's doing much, much better. Sister Ramona Jarvis, that's one of our worship leader, so please continue to hold her up in prayer, as you know, the strain will be upon the others. Amen. So I think those are the announcements for now. So at this time, help me make welcome Pastor Colin James as he come and ministers the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Send the Word to... Well, the name change now is it's what? Celeste Bird Medical Center. You know, to, to Sister Jarvis and to, to Hila. I'm going to ask you to do me... Uh, uh, a, a favor, so to speak, this evening. Um, we are not as large in numbers, and, and some of you all, I can't see your faces. So if you could be so kind as to just sit in these two rows here so that I can see you. The Word of God says, um, iron sharpened iron, and so the countenance of a man's friend sharpened his countenance. Amen? So when I look at you and I see you, I, I feel the energy, and uh, my spirit is sharpened, and my countenance is sharpened. Amen. I thank you for your obedience and your, your um, faithfulness in the house and even for coming out tonight. You know, midweek is um, the time of the week that sometimes it's a challenge and it's a little difficult. You're halfway, you're, 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 you're kind of halfway, you're not near to the beginning and you're not near to the end. You're in the middle. Amen. And so it is in this race of life, you know, sometimes you're going along and you say, Lord, how long, you know? And it seems that nothing changing and things are not happening. But I want to tell you tonight, God is well able to change it. I always used to focus in my mind. I don't know if any of you have ever seen a maze or ever, even do a word puzzle, Deacon, where you, you start here and you're trying to get to the end and you're booting up. That's how life is now. Sometimes we can't see the end of a thing, but God has seen the end. Oh, glory. He sees you standing before the Father. He's saying, well done. You're wearing your crown. I want to encourage your spirits tonight. Amen? To be strengthening God and in, the, in your faithfulness to the house of God and to the things of God. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit, said the Lord. And I'm always so encouraged when I read the word that is not big numbers that, that um, move God. Actually, sometimes God likes when you're small, because when you're small in number, you have to depend on him. Amen? And so when he moves, you know, it's not your big number, do it. You know that it has to have been God intervening on your behalf. And so I, I thankful, I'm so thankful for your faithfulness tonight. Look at that. You see how, how as we come together, you know what begins to happen in the spirit? Iron sharpening iron. Amen? When you put a coal together, you always hear me say that, says, when you have a coal pot, and you take out one coal and put it by itself, what happened? It goes! 
It out, there's nothing there to think. But, you know, but if you, you come, we all come from the same village, see the farm, the coal plant village. You know what I mean? When you have one coal, and that's a fire, and you put some more around it, and then the fire, and you start to blaze, and the Holy Spirit, or help me, Holy Ghost, it starts to catch up. And it starts to catch a fire. One coal catches it. That's what happens when we come close together. In the spirit, things begin to happen, and we can come alive and be blazing for God. But this, this week, I, I just wanted to focus as I was going through, and even as um, Brother Giovanni was leading about that gratitude and that thankfulness to God. I, I look at this week as a week of brokenness. Jesus' body was broken upon Calvary as we reflect back what happened on that, 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 that um, Good Friday, as they say. It's a real Good Friday because it, it purchased our redemption. He had to die for us to come alive. Amen. And I reflect that that was a week when the week was broken. And I reflect upon David in Psalm 51. David was known for his brokenness. Amen. He was a praiser. He was a worshiper. But one thing about David that characterized his life, he was quick to repent, especially when he, he knew he messed up and he slipped up. And he would run to God. And Psalm 51 is one of my favorite psalms. Created me a clean heart, O God and renew a right spirit within me. David knew he had done wrong and he had fallen away from God's grace, but he was quick to repent and be broken before God. And you see, when you're broken, that's when you give God the opportunity and the chance to put you back together again. Amen. It's not Humpty Dumpty. When you fall along, all the king horses and all the king men can't put you back together again. God is in the putting back together business. Amen. He's in the habit of restoring broken hearts, broken lives, and broken pieces, but for him to restore you and for him to put you back together, you must be broken. Amen? So, one of the greatest needs, I think, are the greatest things amongst believers today and children of God is not necessarily more religion or a more church, more program, more conference, more this, more that. It is for men and women to be broken before God and to realize their need for him, and to be focused on always cultivating and, and really developing his presence, working towards it, worshiping, getting into his presence, getting broken. And when you do that, I have seen so many times that the anointing from heaven will just fill you and strengthen you and wash you and overwhelm you when you think about God and what he has done. And so breaking before God is a process. And when you do that, that healing comes, that deliverance comes, salvation comes because of brokenness. For you to become saved, you know the first thing you have to acknowledge that you're a sinner. If you never get it in your spirit or come to the realization that you are in need of being saved, you're going to drown. You'll die in your sins. And that sadly happens to a lot of people. So God wants us to understand tonight that even this broke, breaking before him is a process. And what I love with brokenness is that one time you get broken up, Saints of the living God, if you have been broken once before God and you're saved and you go on and you never get a feeling that God wants to break you again, watch, watch that spirit. It's a kind of pride thing. It's a, sometimes a, a self-righteous religious thing. That, I, I'm not, that's not for me. I'm saved. I'm Holy Ghost filled. I'm sanctified. Sometimes God works on us constantly and the little areas of our life that he has to break. Like a, like, like a bit of pride, like a bit of stubbornness, like a bit of chatty chattiness. A lot of things he has to break off of us for us to be like him. Amen? So I looked and saw, like, you know, as I was meditating and researching and reading, that there are like three stages in the broken process, Deacon. And the first thing is this. The breaking is the process where God must take the throne. A lot of times we can't break before God because other things rule in our heart. It can be your job, your children, your family, your wife, your spouse, whatever. Your pride, your self-sufficiency, your big job, your little job, your medium job, your business, whatever you are depending on. You are self-sufficient, so some people think, I don't need God. I don't have to be broken because I'm, I'm all right. I'm set, you know. I have a big Godfather. I have a politician. I have somebody to keep me up and prop me up, or I can prop up myself. But brokenness does not necessarily mean that you have some tragedy, but it's so that you get rid of that self-sufficiency so that Christ can shine through and Christ can take the highest seat in your life. Amen? He's the one that can come on top. 
So it's not so much the circumstances. You may say, oh, you know, um, Sister Maria, I, I extend my heartfelt condolences to you and your family as you're going through a period now, a brokenness. Losing a loved one breaks, you know, it breaks your heart. I've been there and I understand. And Jesus understood. Because that's why he wept when he went to, to Lazarus and he heard that Lazarus has died. But it's not necessarily sometimes the circumstances, but our response to the circumstances that God is looking at. Amen? When you know God, you know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So you might be broken and you might be sad, Sister Charles, but you're not cast down without no hope because you know that once the person who's died, died in the Lord and knows the Lord and you know God, you know that is just a brief separation. And one day you'll be reunited with them and this time there's going to be no more separation. Amen? So you understand? Sometimes the chain of life has to be broken here. Oh, glory to God. So it to be knit together again there on the other side. And even as we go through this week, we remember that. So God strips you of the self-sufficiently, sorry, self-sufficiently, self-sufficiency, help me, Holy Ghost, and cleans you up, spring clean. You know, the kind of clean Sister Charles, what it does do at Christmas time. You remember that kind of cleaning? Take down curtain, scrub board floor, all kind of things. But it does clean, clean, clean. That's what God wants to do. Spring clean you out. Break you. Match away all that. That's not good. And to put you back together again. You know? You know, sometimes you go to a point where God dries up every resource that you have. God blocks every exit that you have. God takes away every godfather. He helped me, Holy Ghost, every politician, every friend. Nobody return your phone calls. God takes away everything from you so that you can learn to depend on him. Because he's all in all. And when he does that, sometimes he just breaks you and you say, Lord, okay, now, I'm ready. I, I realize that you're all that I need. Amen? And, and, and the power is reserved for you. When I give it up and let you come as the, 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 on the throne of my heart and, 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 and Lord of my life, things will begin to happen. So that power is reserved for you when you give up your own strength and you begin to trust God. You know, when God is all you have, you realize that God is all that you need. Amen? When you don't have nobody else to depend on, you know it's him that would have come true for you. When you really, utterly rock bottom, as they say, you realize that he's the one, the rock at the bottom, the solid rock, not moving, not shaking, not going anywhere. Amen? But sometimes he has to break us down to bring us to that point. Amen? Zechariah 4, 6 says this, So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. That's what's going to keep us now, even as we get broken up and we don't have nothing to depend on, but the spirit of the living God is what's going to infuse us and refresh us and strengthen us so that we can go on on this road called life. Here's what David wrote in, in Psalm 51, verse 17 of the psalm, when he was broken before God. He realized he had messed up, he had done wrong, he had sinned. And he wrote, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, that will not despise. Once you become broken before God, he will never despise you. He will never laugh at you. You know, sometimes when we are broken, other people may laugh and think it's funny. But God never laughs because he sees your heart. He's after your heart. He sees the brokenness in your spirit, in, in, in how contrite you are to him. Sometimes you get, I get broken sometimes just in thanksgiving. Just reflecting on Calvary and reflecting on what Jesus did for us. It breaks me. Because, you know, greater love had no man than this, than a man that laid down his life for his friend. You can imagine when he was going to Calvary, the Bible says he sweat like great drops of blood. It was heavy. When he thought, you think of all the sins that was gone before, all the sins that gone since then, and all the sins to come, he took it all in his body on the tree. That took commitment and love for him to do that. And he was what? His body was broken for us, pierced in his side, whipped. His back was torn up, crown of thorns, tear up his brow. They spit on him. Can you imagine? They nailed him on a tree that he created. The, the iron, what that made the nails, the metal, he, he put it in the earth. There's nothing made that was not made by him. But he held out because he was wanted to be broken for me and you. And David talked about a sacrifice. You know what a sacrifice is? 
What has to happen for a sacrifice to be real? Something has to die. Somebody has to die. Jesus had to die for the sacrifice to be real. So if you want to experience that new level of grace, that new level of power in God, that brokenness means certain things in our lives have to die. The self-reliance, the ego, amen, the independence, whatever it is, it has to be broken. For those of you who are into a little farming and gardening and so on, you know, when you put, when we used to do this in school, they used to tell us to bring peas and we put the peas in a jar, amen, in the cotton wool. And so, they still do that? I'm old school. And you wet it and see that it germinates. But for the seed to germinate and come into a plant, the thing has to what? Break. A breaking has to take. When, when, a, when, a, when a fowl sit down on a nest with the, with, with the, the eggs, what has to happen for that chick to come alive? Shell must what? Break. A break. Let me tell you something. No, just God don't mean what breaking needs to take place. Ladies, when that nine months is up, and you have that child in your stomach. What is one of the first signs that you know the baby is ready to come? Water must what? Break. For, for that child, the first sign, the water must break. That child is ready to come. What is God saying? For this newness and the renewal to come and the new life, something must break. Bro brokenness. Amen. It's a process. It has to go through us. You can't get from A to Z without going to B, C, D, E. Process. That's what God is saying. Amen. You know, I, I always recall the story of Paul when he was on the Damascus Road and he had started out going to persecute God and to, to um, attack the saints and put them, he was going with letters to round up all the Christians and send them back in chains to Jerusalem and put them, you know, really persecute them. And the Lord knocked him down on that Damascus road and appeared to him in a light. And when Christ appeared to Paul and, and, and he realized who it was, you know, he answered in Acts 9, 16, he says, Lord, what will you have me to do? And that's what God is saying tonight. When, when you become broken before me and you understand your situation and you realize you, you, you cannot be self-sufficient, you can't do it, you need me. Once you cry out to God, your response, and he, he makes himself rich, is, Lord, what do you want me to do? We talked on Sunday about obedience and obeying what God is telling us to do. Sometimes we're not hearing nothing else from God because he tells us to do something and we just disobey. We're not listening. We're not. We, we may hear, but we ain't listen. It's a big difference. Here you go, in India. Listen is when you really meditate on it and then you respond and do it. And that's what God is saying. If you're in the breaking process tonight, if you're in the breaking area, in any part of your life that's been broken, you have a, a several options. The first one, you can resist. You can pretend that it's not happening. You can run, like Jonah. <laughs> I like, you can't run from God, no, because there's one thing with God. He, he has more, uh, how you call it, deacon, when you're when you, at least the breath. You can run long. He has more endurance than you. He wear you out. And Jonah run and run. He tells Jonah must go this direction. And Jonah gets on a boat and head the other way. And God had to arrest him and break him and bring him back the other way. So you can run, but you can't hide. Or you can respond and say, yes, Lord, I understand. I need you. I realize what you did for me. What will you have me to do for you? So the breaking, saints, is a process. And it requires total surrender for God, to God for him to have his way in your life. And that's the first thing. The second thing that I understand from, from even as I studied about breaking and even with David, is that breaking is a process that will eventually lead to blessings. Amen? You remember when um, God was calling um, Elisha to follow after Elijah? Elisha was a farmer now, pushing his plow board behind, and Elisha called and tell him the battle to follow him. You know what the Lord tell him? Go and burn, the prophet said, go and burn up your plow and, and that. It means cut off that thing there. Amen? Because that's going to lead you to other things. And Elisha, as the word of God said, get the, what, the double portion. Greater miracles he did. Amen? Than Elijah before him. You remember the alabaster box and the lady Mary with the alabaster box? What did she have to do to really display the, the, the worship before God? What she did? She broke the box, break in, and it led to a blessing. When the box was broken up, 
the scent of, oh, glory, the heaven will go. The scent from the alabaster box, the rich, rich perfume light up the whole place. It changed the atmosphere. The breaking, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. The breaking caused the blessing to old flow. See, some of them vexed. Oh, what she could have, the money could have sell and buy it. You remember? The wicked Judas. Go and thief the, the money. Talk about. This, this could have been sold for homagey, homagey, and then put in the treasury. Lying devil. Give God what belongs to him. Worship, sweetness, nice things, good things. Help me here, Holy Ghost. You remember Gideon and the 300? When they went into battle, they had some pictures with a lantern. What did they, they, they did when they shout? They break the picture. The breaking caused the light. Help me, Holy Ghost, to shine out. When you have the light in the picture, nobody could see it. But when they broke it, and the light began to shine, and the movement of the light, it, it, it caused like confusion in the camps of the enemy. And they defeated them. God is saying for you to go on. Amen to the blessings that I have for you. The victory that's there, you have to break some things. It's a process that's going to lead to the blessings. Amen. Bad habits, your stubborn will, you know, your puffed upness, your know it allness. That's God is saying to us. Those are the things that I want to take out of you. Prejudice. Yo, oh, Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. You know, you know, um, you cannot. The world, you hear me say this all the time. People will know that we are Christians by what? The love that we have one for another. You cannot say, the Bible says that clearly, that you love God, whom you never see, but you hate your neighbor across the road because they come from Santo Domingo or Jamaica or Guyana or wherever. And I love the Lord, but I love them Jamaican tall. You lie. You cannot love a God that you never see. Say you love God that you never see, and the people who are around you, you say every day, you say you don't love. And this one thing that I pray all the time, that the unity and the oneness of the kingdom of God will always be found amongst us as a body of believers. No kind of segregation and discomfort here and comfort that all out of from, from, from somewhere. Amen? Or don't we come out of our, our mother. Amen? And this is our Father's world. Wherever God will let you come to live, it belongs to you. You have as much right as anybody else. We originally came here too. Amen? The original people who lived in Antigua, they're dead out. Columbus wiped them. It's true, Pastor, help me, Holy Ghost. So it belongs, what am I saying is if you don't love other people, you're not going to end up in heaven. Out of every kindred, that's what the Bible says, tribe and tongue, Chinese, Indian, Spanish, Portuguese, you name it, they're going to be there. So if you don't love them down there, oh, you end up there. You're going to feel out of place. Amen. That should never be found amongst the children of God. This segment, I, it perks my heart when I hear people say things like that. He really does. So God wants us to put some things aside. Amen? As we are going forward. If, you, if you're going east towards Mill Reef, you're not going up west to Five Island. It's a change around. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a reversal of what's happening. Amen? And so sometimes different things are happening in our life and God is disciplining us. Things are happening. He's trying to get our attention. And he's trying to get us to the point where we, 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 we understand what he's doing and we take um, the lessons from the brokenness. Anybody here like blow? Discipline? Nobody like... I mean, you, 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 know, you know that I'm older and I'm a grown man and I'm more mature. I thank God for the blows that I used to get. And, the, and the, you know, I thank my parents for the cough and so that they get. I remember one time, you hear, I like to share from my experience now. I remember one time I was giving my mother some back chat, and I'm there and I think, and a woman come by the door, and she had a piece of chicken she took out the freezer, and she fire, and I'm running, and I'm going down, and I saw the chicken to come down behind me, bop, chop me right to my head. I never forget that. I was disrespectful to my mother, and you know, but she hit, and Noah said, thank you, Lord, that Molly James chopped me with a piece of chicken, because it made me, it taught me a lesson. But at the time, amen, I didn't like it. I was upset, I was, and to make it worse, everybody started to laugh. So I feel embarrassed now, and I feel ashamed. And she told me, I must bring back your chicken, so I had to go and take it up and carry it back. Amen. But I didn't like it, so what I'm saying, discipline or chastening, when you're getting it, it's not joyful, it's not nice, but it has a, a good outcome. Amen. It taught me to not respect, disrespect my parents. The Bible says the first commandment will promise if you honor your father and your mother, your days shall be what? Long upon the land that you, the Lord thy God has given thee. 
It's right there in the word now, Hebrews 12, 11. Now, no chastening, pastor, seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he becomes old, he will not depart from it. Amen? I never chop my kids with dinner no chicken, but I still try and train them at the best of my ability because of what was poured into me in Jesus' name. Amen? So, God wants us to break some habits, to change some things, to go through some discipline, go through some, some hard corrections and so on, but it is for our good. Amen? It will be bring righteousness. It will yield good fruit in the long run when you have been trained by it. And it leads you, in the end, it leads to um, abundant life, you know. Here's what Paul had to say. First Thessalonians 5, 23. Now, all the attendant blessings that have come to Paul like, because he made a God of peace himself, sanctify you, he's writing to the Thessalonian church, completely, and may your whole spirit, your soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You notice the order there? Spirit first, the transformation, the salvation, the, the new spirit that you're getting when you become a Christian. Your soul, your emotions, your way of thinking, the way you reason, how you, mm, that has to change. And what the final part that followed the pastor? Your body. So the body is not going to stop, do something until the spirit gets saved and the soul, emotions also get transformed and the mind gets renewed and then the body must fall into place. And you will be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Secret of victory, brokenness, surrender, transformation, eternal life. And it brings me to the last point that I want to share tonight, even as we, we're thinking of Holy Week and um, Good Friday that's coming up. And saints of the living God, when you come Good Friday, please, nobody come in a black. We're not mourning for Jesus. You know, he, he died but he is alive. Hallelujah! That is the key understanding of this Easter season. He is alive forevermore. And we all came up into the ranks, you know, religious. You remember Good Friday service? I just hate it. It just be long and morning. And, you know, it's just... You, you feel depressed when you finish. Everybody have on black and white, like they're going funeral and they're sad and you can't, you know. No, when you Jesus is alive. We commemorate what he did, and we're going to have the Lord's Supper because he said when you break that, then his body he said, do this as long as you do that. You, 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 you're testifying and you're declaring his death until he comes again. You're remembering him. But we're not sad. We're not going to come beaten down and sad. Amen. Do I have an amen? Amen. Jesus is alive. Amen. But the breaking is a process that eventually gives yourself away. Just think of what Jesus, his body was broken, and he was basically given away for us now, so that we might have your eternal life. You remember the story in Luke 9 when he, he um, fed the multitude with the little boy's lunch, the five loaves and the two, the two fishes passed up. The word of God said he took them and he looked up to heaven. What did he do? He blessed them and he broke them. And he gave them the disciples to set before the multitude. So in the breaking there of that physical bread, and just, real, just, just think of what, what some, so many times um, Jesus has put in class in terms of what? The bread of life. Amen. His body is a bread given for you, broken for you. And in breaking and giving out, everybody was blessed. One li- I, <laughs> when I just read this story right there, I just say, Lord, 5,000 people go to um, a church meeting, a revival, and nobody walk with the food. <laughs> One little boy had a food, but that's how God wanted it to be. And when they want to do there for the whole day, you know, the disciples say, other people, them hungry, send them back, send them go look food somewhere else, you know. Where 5,000 5, people go? No, KFC was there at the time. Amen. So where they going to eat? And they said they have one little boy with something, and Jesus was trying to teach them something. When you break and you bless, oh, glory to God, it is multiplied supernaturally to sustain you. That's why you're supposed to bless your meal before you eat it. Amen. Even as we fellowshiped on Sunday, we ate a little food or whatever. It multiplied. Amen. Pastor, didn't want to everybody get food, right? Amen. God has a way of doing that. I never forget this. Deacon, you can recall there was a Mother's Day when we ordered some, some mugs. There's those coffee mugs that you put in the car. 
you know, you can walk with the thermos kind of cup. We had, that was what the men did for the gifts for Mother's Day. And you know Mother's Day, not like Father Day, church round pack. How much we order, Deacon? About 150? I think that was the number we ordered. said, no more than 150 mothers come in church Mother's Day. Boy, the table right there. And the mug and them get less and less and the line they get longer. <laughs> and I started praying. I said, Lord, you will have to do a, a five loaf, two fish kind of thing here today. Because we don't want to be embarrassed when the ladies come up and none for you. And, you know, they had on a scripture verse and everything. We don't have no more. And we started, I, start, I don't know who else, but I started to pray. I said, Father, don't let us be embarrassed. I don't know what you're going to do, but you're going to have to multiply them more from this table here. So every, and I tell you, saints of the living God, every single woman got, and there were some left over for who didn't come to church, and everybody was, was satisfied. What am I saying? When you bless and break and, and thank God, blessings after blessings are multiplied to you. Amen. Just today I was telling somebody, you know, some people don't just say, oh, nobody give me nothing. La, 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 la. You ever give anybody anything? It is in giving that we what? Receive. Amen. When you, my hand is open here to pastor, pastor, when I open it, how to give you something? My hand open for receive something. But if me, I can't buy nothing. That me. You don't ever get nothing from God. You don't ever get anything. And let me tell you, saints of the living God, see? Don't ever be stingy with what God has blessed you with. Whether it's two mango in your garden, spinach, whatever God has blessed you with, bless somebody with it. Because that's how you guarantee your blessing. That's why your mango tree always baker, you give chick water to the mango in them. So God is blessing you back with more to give. Because that's how he works. It's a law of reciprocity, giving and receiving. Amen. Your faithfulness in your giving with your tithes and your free will offering. I have learned in my life, I can't outgive God. Can't. And God don't lie. God don't change his mind or change his word. Press down, shaking together and running over. Will men what? Give in to you. Oh, glory to God. Amen. That's how God works. In order to bless others through you, he will take you. He will break you. He will bless you. And he will give you away to other people. That's the process in the breaking process. Certain things had to be broken. Amen. And Paul talked about um, God in, 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 in keeping him humble. God um, allowed a thorn to be in his flesh. Nobody really knows what he, he called it a messenger of Satan that buffets him. Amen. Lest he be exalted above measure. Sometimes God allows things, even as we come broken before him, amen. We say, Lord, you know, I've been praying, I've been broken, I've been asking you to, to take this thing away from me. This, from me. I believe, so just as in Paul's case, there's some things that afflict us, and God will never take them away until we get before him in heaven. When we leave planet, we go to go. you know why? That is so that you don't get exalted above measure. The Lord knows that if he took away everything from some of us, we'd be so puffed up. Amen? We'd be so prideful. We'd be saved and sanctified, full with the Holy Ghost. Amen? God would, does God have it really good if we keep you, keep, you, keep you in check sometime? So, even though Paul was buffeted by that thing, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. That's what he said to Paul. When he, Paul said he paid three times. That's God to take it away. God said, no, no, my grace is sufficient for you for what? My strength is made, per oh, help me, Holy Ghost, perfect in your weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities. That's what Paul said, that the power of who? Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. Amen. And sometimes some sickness in our bodies, in reproaches. People um, treat you bad. In need, sometimes you go into lack. In persecutions. Amen. In distresses. For whose sake? Christ's sake. For when I am weak, help me, Holy Ghost. That's when I am strong. When you are weak, you learn to depend. You learn to look up. When, when all your, 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 your platforms and your support systems get taken away, you keep your eyes focused on God and upon Jesus. So if you have a situation that's thorny in your life, that's tough in your life, that's causing you to be broken before God many times, and he hasn't taken it away from yet, um, God is trying to, to let you understand that his strength, 
will become perfect in you when you are weak and you give it all to him. Amen? So it's a sacrifice. That's what David was saying. A sacrifice. The type of sacrifices that God wants is a broken spirit, a contrite heart. Amen? So that we can walk in his power and we can walk in his blessings through a period of brokenness. So thank God for whatever you're going through tonight, for whatever you're going through today, whatever you've been going through this week, knowing that Christ went through much more than that for you so that you will be seated here tonight in your right mind, saved and sanctified, and knowing that Jesus paid it all for you. Stand to your feet. We thank you, Lord, for what you did tonight. Thank you, Father, for uh, revealing, even by the, the Holy Spirit, what is it that you're saying to your people and the situations that they may go through, oh God, of periods of brokenness, of periods of, of, of trial and distress, Lord, that reproaches, infirmities, oh God, it's all so that we can look to you, knowing that you are the author and the finisher of this race of faith that we're in, Lord God. Knowing that you've never left us, you've never forsaken us, Lord God, and even as we go through these weak periods of our life, we will be strong because of you and the Holy Spirit that lives within us. So thank you, Lord, that this word will not return void. It will strengthen people. It will um, let them know, Lord God, that the periods and the process of brokenness will lead to blessings eventually as they give themselves away totally to you and to your honor, to your service, and to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless your brother, bless your sister, and thank God. Yes, before you go, saints, we stand corrected. It is 10 a.m. on Good Friday that we're going to meet in for, for service here. So same time as regular worship, 10 o'clock on Friday, in Jesus' name. Amen.